This video is brought to you by Photogenic by BenQ. Please check out this Facebook page for the latest news, videos and articles about photography and so much more. Then we, of course, the reason also I do this is because by having it separated, also it allows me to plug in certain extra things. So for example, if I do a new lighting using the normals, for example, to do a bit of a rim light or to do a bit of relighting, or if I want to put some dirt, then I can do so because I can put that dirt specifically on a specific layer or on a specific pass. So give you an example, this is a setup that uh, we usually use using the, the UVs. So this all starts by having the UVs of the project. So if I go here to uh, the, oh, I can't even, sorry. I need to open this up a little bit so I can see it. So these are the UVs of the project. This is the main UV that we did uh, uh, coming from ZBrush and coming from Mari and Substance as well. And what we're doing here is that I wanted to put some dirt um, on him and it was a bit too late to go to 3D and actually paint that in into Mari and paint that in and sculpt all of those things. So I did a little bit of a, a, a really small thing here, which is basically I have a, a, a layer of scratches. So these are just like regular scratches. This is basically a piece of stock uh, of some scratches. You can also draw it, of course. Uh, I'm tiling it so that I have even more scratches. So this is like a huge layer of scratches that we have here. It gets merged uh, on top with a noise pattern. So I have a noise pattern that I am then screening it on top. So now I have some noise and some scratches. And then basically I merge it in top of my UVs. Now, uh, the reason I do this is because of course I'm switching off my UVs. I only want to keep the actual frame numbers of my UVs because on every frame I have a different set of UVs. So if I go to frame one, I have these UVs, frame two, I have these UVs, frame three, I have these UVs. So all the UV setups are all uh, in 4K frame by frame. So that's why I want to keep my frame. So if I want to specifically put scratches on the face, I then have frame hold of one. So then once that's done, I then have the scratches, they get frame hold to a specific UV, and then they get UV tiled all together. So if I look at my UV at the moment, that then gets into a cache file. So this is the geometry of the project. It was disabled, so as soon as I enabled it, he detected automatically a new geometry. So I'm just gonna say yes. So now it's gonna bring in the new geometry from Maya. And now we should have the main character popping in soon. It should just take a... So that's my character. I'm just gonna change this to texture so we can actually see it a bit better. Um, so that's my main character. Then uh, that, those scratches get plugged in into the character. So when I render it out through my scanline render of Nuke, and of course through the camera, I get something like this. So if I look at through the perspective of my camera, I don't see much if I go to the last frame here. That's what I see. Basically, I get the, UV, the scratches all on the UVs. Then, of course, I go to my 2D version, and you can kind of see that that's the result. And I know it looks a bit rough, and it is a bit rough, but it doesn't. you'll see what I'm gonna do with this. So this is basically just a layer of scratches and a layer of, 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 um, of um, dirt. Now, this could have been much better done, of course, but this was like last days of the production, we have 60 shots to go, you know, we have a lot of shots to do. I need to find something fast and quick just to tweak things. And I couldn't really go in and really paint scratches on a specific layer and specific on the arm or just on the face. I wanted something that would work as a general dirt pass, scratch pass that I wanted to use. So that got rendered out because of course this is quite heavy uh, when you use the scan line. I rendered it as this, I rendered it as an EXR. This EXR also uh, has an alpha channel, of course. If I play it back, that's how it looks. I also had the scan line render was set up to have a motion blur on, uh, so that it's also motion blurred the same way as my render. And then, then what I do here is I do a couple of things. I first start by unpremultiplying this these scratches. Yes. So the geometry knows by through by by this. So this you see this, these are the UVs, right? And so the way that my UV artists work is that we do frame by frame all the UVs. So if I go to frame 1001, that's the UV for the face. 
If I go to the frame 1002, that's the UVs for the gloves, for example. So what you can see here is that I have a frame hold. So that means if I have a frame hold here to 1001, he's going to apply the scratches to the UVs of the face. If I go to 1002, it's going to apply the scratches to the UVs of the gloves. This is then using a UV tile node in Nuke, and then I use a merge mat to merge the two UV setups. This then gets all merged up, except the last three, because I wasn't using them. And then I need to use a node in Nuke called the multi-texture. You can't see anything going on here, because you have to go frame by frame. But as it gets plugged into the geometry, what you get is this. Like if I now, for example, go in here and I switch off certain things, if I switch off some of these, you see that it only UVs on certain parts. Yeah, it's telling him where to put the UVs. Yeah, exactly. So it's a combination of you putting the UV tile with the merge mat, and then you have the multi-texture node to do that. And, and so if I switch all of it off, you can clearly see that one at a time, I start putting the scratches on certain parts. And of course, I could have put on these ones, but I, I didn't want to switch this on, because this one is, if I remember correctly, if I take away these two nodes. Yeah, so that's the, the face. I don't want scratches on the face. I don't want scratches on the skin. Um, also didn't want scratches on the eyes. And also didn't want scratches on the, the, the vest, you know, the, the cape. He has like a cape. Would have looked weird if he had scratches on that. So that's why I didn't put these on. Any other questions? You guys all with me still, still so far? OK. Please stop me if you have questions. So from here, then what I do is I basically have, uh, I merge two ID passes because I want to make sure the scratches are only affecting the actual armor. So I use, I use the object IDs that I had, and then I mask out what I don't want, which is to have the skin and to have the inner uh, armor uh, with that. So because you see in here, you see that he has some, a piece of cloth and he has the actual uh, face. I don't want the scratches to be there, so I've removed that out of the equation. And then from there, you see, because I'm, ran because I'm compositing layer by layer, light by light, speckler by speckler, I can now apply the scratches where they should be applied. The scratches are being applied on the diffuse. They shouldn't be applied on anything else. That's where they should be applied correctly, because if you would have done scratches, you would have done them on the diffuse pass. That's where a 3D artist would have made them. You know what I mean? So that means that, uh, basically, I do a bit of color correction because it was a bit too strong. And I then screen them on top. So now if I look at my diffuse, you can clearly see that I have very, very thin scratches on everything. And this was something that I wish I could have done in, in 3D, but I ran out of time. And I also ran out of budget. So I had to kind of take matters into my own hands and do it in 2D, do it in Nuke. And that's what I did. And so now you can see that you have scratches on everything. Now, besides that, so this means now my diffuse filter is already like this. And so now when I merge the diffuse filter with my direct light, you can kind of see that now the scratches are there. So if I disable the scratches, you see, they're actually built in into the armor as well. The other thing as well that I do here is I want to put an extra layer of scratches. So then I also I, what I do here is I have a, a multiplication going on. So I have my diffuse. I have my scratches. I multiply them between them. And then I call the correct them. And then I merge them on top just a little bit. Because I thought it was a bit too subtle, the scratches. So I placed a little bit more scratches there. And so you see what happens here is that I'm getting these kind of like little nice details of inner scratch and like little pockets of the armor that are, that are a little bit brighter and everything. And you get like these kind of scratch. So for example, in here, it almost looks like someone scratched this area here. It just gives a bit extra believability into the armor. And it doesn't look like a, like a Barbie doll anymore. You know, it's a bit more roughed up. That would be the objective, of course, of doing something like this. So then this, of course, gets applied to all the texture. And so if I look at the result of my final uh, comp, you can clearly see that the scratches that I play plus in, I'm going to just select the scratches on both sides. And I'm going to zoom in here. So you see, it's very subtle, but it's enough to give me scratches there, to give me this embraced metal here, to get some extra brazing going on there, to actually have on the shoulder pads, you have like little pockets of, of, of dirt. You have little pockets of just extra lines everywhere. 
It just makes it look cooler. That's what you want, really, is to make it look cooler. Um, okay, cool. So that's just a little bit of the extra stuff that I, I have there. And this is one of the main reasons why I tend to separate everything pass by pass. 